All right, let's see if this ends up working. So the way I've got this this first uh, bend on this uh, this schedule forty uh, one inch schedule forty pipe aluminum uh, sixty sixty three is I want to end up with sixteen inches of scrap at the end for a straight run that I need in my project, which gives me a little bit of leeway for bending this thing, so I don't have to be so careful with it. Um, so actually my 16 inch line right here, that's where I uh, uh, protect for for scrap, but the actual, pro actual project requires one, two, three straight inches, and then my first bends are going to be, well, all my bends should be contained between uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All these eight lines should contain all of my need for bending. I'm gonna do 10 pumps on each of those lines. Uh, I'm trying not to touch 20, 29, or 30. And I believe if I do this in this scale right here, I should get my 90 degree bend, um, and I should have my 16 inches free for my cooler rack. So this is what I'm gonna give a tr oh, Yesterday I tried to do this, and I tried to do 15 pumps, and I ended up a little bit a little bit heavy to where I didn't have enough room to uh, to complete 15 pumps on every one of these. So let's short it to 10, cut it by 33%. Um, and yeah, let's, let's give that a shot, see what happens. <coughs> I probably have to cut this aluminum off. It's just a wee bit long for my pipe bender. Little personal shop note I'll throw into here. It's I've got six foot three inches cut off right there that should create exactly one half of the upper ring of my rack uh, that'll leave 16 inches for one of my crossbars to keep the cooler in place as well all right so i have calculated out i'm hoping that i did it right that mark number 23 on mine in blue right there that's the absolute center of my bend at least that's the absolute center of where I desire the outcome of my bend radius to be, which is right here. And that is the equivalent of this point right here. That's, uh, that's what I'm hoping happens. If that all works out, it should leave me 16 inches from uh, the end of my pipe cut off. It should leave me a 16 inch chunk out the end of it. That's straight as well. And another quick shop note. If I didn't want any scrap overage, which this whole 16 is supposed to be for a piece of scrap, I would actually start my first bend seven inches, uh, seven inches from the actual cutoff end of my project. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So that that should be the math, just so I can refer to this later. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how this works. And just so you guys can see how we're using this reference line here that we drew out on the garage floor, that reference line is supposed to match up with these reference lines here on my dies, on that end and on this end, to the best we can. There's there's play and slop left and right. You know, it might benefit me to put a couple, actually, I'm gonna go ahead, I think, and put some washers on the end there just to kind of keep the distance equal left to right. All right, so I don't have any washers that'll actually fit that, so we'll just uh, proceed on. Probably could slap one of these on there actually and that would pretty well, but not gonna do that. So we're gonna get our reference lines lined up. What I wanted to show you is I don't know if you can see this on the video, but you know, there's so much slop in this die. So when you start out, just try to have it, you know, reasonably straight in line here with everything else. Give yourself the best possibility of a chance of success. And get your reference lines on your pipes as close as you can. What I do on this, uh, I don't know if you can see where my finger's at here. <clears throat> In order to, to establish initial tension, uh, while you're keeping everything straight, you got your 23 mark here lined up on your, your middle mark on your actual die, right? So let's try to be as accurate as you possibly can on this, this first sample that we're doing. And uh, in order to get everything tightened up so it stays in line, 
hold it in place and then use your finger to jack this guy <laughs> to jack to jack this thing up <laughs> sorry that was pretty funny all right so it is it's tight reference lines look good <clears throat> put our finger again pull down i can't really pull down by pulling down on this with the same tension on every single individual movement we know that we have basically taken out the slop, therefore our 10 pumps that we put on this thing should be reasonably accurate with each other. Uh, so let's see what happens. We're starting again at the dead center <coughs> of our, our uh, marked out lines. So let's do 10, 10 pumps on this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Excuse me. Equally important, let's document which lines we've already bent. So this is the 23 line. So I'm just going to put a little 23 check right there. <coughs> now I'm going to go back and forth. So I'm going to go, I got 23 on center. I'm going to now bend one line to the left. Then I'm going to bend one line to the right. One line to the left, one line to the right. I'm going to try that and see if that helps me to keep this this pipe from wanting to push and slide one way or another. Yesterday, the problem that I was having was exactly that. It, it just, after a few degrees were bent in there, you tighten it up and the pipe would want to slide and favor one side or another, but I wasn't being meticulous with going, you know, center, then left, then right, then left, then right to keep a smooth arc in there. <coughs> Excuse me, so we'll see if this helps. That being said, my next bend, I'm gonna move one to the left, one, one inch line to the left which will be on number 24. All right, so now we are set up on inch line number 24. <clears throat> Gonna do the same thing with our finger. All right, we've taken out all the slop. Now we give her 10 cranks. Check my uh, reference lines, everything looks good. <coughs> Now we're going to move off to the right of center, so back to over to number 22 after we document that we just did number 24. 24. I just don't want to dupe, uh, double up and accidentally do one of these lines twice is what we're going for. <coughs> so over to number 22, put that on center. Kind of balance it in place. Use our handy dandy finger to put this thing into place a little bit closer to where it needs to be resting. Right about there. Looks good for all the reference lines. That's about as tight as my finger can make her. <coughs> Holy smolies. All right, we're documented 24, 23, we're on line number 22, give her 10. Documenting number 22. Moving back to the far left, that'll be number 25 next. is going to want to start sliding on this one. So I'm going to put some, get it on the, on the center, and put downward pressure over here, and start putting the uh, material in place. Hopefully that doesn't slide. Straighten my finger on that. <coughs> Excuse me. We are on line number 25. 
two. Let's see, we did. See, this is where I need to keep track. So I got 23, then I went to 24, went over to 22. <coughs> yep, yeah, 25. 10 cracks. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. <coughs> Just recovering from an upper respiratory infection, so I apologize about all the hacking, but this is why I'm in my garage. Staying clear of other people. Don't need to give uh, my neighbors or my neighbor's babies an upper respiratory infection right now. So let's just hang out in the garage and, and learn something. All right, so we got 25. We've done 22. So let's go over to the right to number 21 next. See how that wanted to slide over already? <coughs> lines checked this is definitely not for you know a fabricator to be messing around with it. anybody who's done fab before is probably laughing right now whatever but this is for garage folks weekend warriors like me all right there's line up on number 21 so the pipe did want to slide just now <clears throat> it pulled it a little bit to the left of the number 21. That's fine. I'm about an eighth of an inch to the left towards center on 21. As tight as I can get it. That's good. I'm going to hold it here so it doesn't slide anymore. And let's do uh, 10. to number 26. So as this project, as you're feeding this in, and as a project wants to just, you're, you're tensioning it up with your finger, just getting everything set, and it's gonna to wanna to pull to one side or the other, <clears throat> one solution to that or remedy that helps is moving these pins in. This project, I will probably end up moving into here like now or very soon, but do not go into this one. At least I'm not gonna go into this one. It wasn't necessary. <clears throat> it ended up uh, it ended up breaking 6061 pipe when I came into this diameter. I haven't fully vetted that to see if that's a repeatable problem. I broke it in three places and gave up on it. So um, my recommendation is just to uh, uh, stick with when you're on this aluminum schedule 40 anyway the one inch don't go any further than these two pegs and you should be able to get your 90 degree bend <coughs> okay so we just did 21 right so now we're heading over to 26 I feel like I am going to need to uh, move these pegs in I think it's gonna to want to slide a too much. Yep, let's see, it's gonna slide, sliding. It's on 26, it's halfway over to the right. So, <clears throat> I feel it's time to move my pegs in. And we should be able to do that, but we're gonna to have to drop our, our ram a little bit more because of the lower posture of that. <clears throat> Peg. That'll give us some headroom on the pipe. Really don't, probably don't need to put these cotter pins in, but I think I'm gonna end up having to lay this ram down on its back with the uh, uh, bleed facing up in order to complete this project. So we'll see. Pins in if I have to lay it down. 
<clears throat> so again, doing all this talking, yada, yada, yap, yap. I wouldn't know where I was supposed to be at right now, but having it documented now, I know that I got to go to the number 26. Close to number 26. I think I counted about 4,000 pumps yesterday with my right index finger doing this. <coughs> Just trying to set stuff up and end up with this monster freaking wound on my index finger under these gloves. Still wanting to pull a little bit to the left, pull the product to the left. So let me brace it in. What I'll do is, so I'm, I'm about as, as tight as I can get with my hands anyway. So I'm just gonna hold this in place the best I can. I'm gonna be in the camera's way, but uh, I don't want it to slide off of 26 too far. 26, correct, yeah. One, two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. <clears throat> so we're, we're a little over, I think a little over 45 degrees right now. And it did come off the 26, it slid about a quarter inch to the right of it as we were cranking down. So that's going to happen, that's not a big deal, you'll still get your radius bend. These aren't absolute perfect shop, you know, like the fabricator shop bends. <clears throat> That's why you need yourself a little bit of extra, uh, extra meat on the end of your project so that you can account for errors like this. So let's document 26 before I forget. Oops. <clears throat> So I think if, I, uh, if I've done my math right, we only have two more left before we have to go through the series again. And uh, we'll start with like maybe two or three, probably, probably three pumps on each if we have to do that. Maybe, maybe not even that much actually. So that was 26 and we came up with 21, so we're back to number 20. And I'm running out of room on my bench here. <clears throat> with the tail of the project. So get away with at least one more bend like this, I believe. And then we'll possibly have to lay it down. We'll see. 26, 21, going to 20. There's 20. Oh, I'm hoping we'll hit 90 degrees before I, I have to uh, re do everything over again, but that's what this particular test is about today, is trying to figure out, figure that out. I'm going to start a little bit to the left, excuse me, I'm going to start out a little bit to the right of the 20 mark, this way, <clears throat> just so that maybe, you know, I can account for that slide. Maybe I can, I can actually get this thing to stay where I want it to by pre-adjusting a little bit. So let's try that. Yeah, so by starting a little bit off center, it actually slid right back to where I wanted it to. So never thought about that before, but that'll work. All right, so we are at 10 pumps on 20. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So looking at my Looking at my angle right now, I'm getting I'm getting close to 90, but it's not critical close yet. <clears throat> to where I really need to watch what I'm doing. So I'm at 20. Here, I counted. Let's back this ram down a little bit. Right. Let's see, so we're going over to number 27, which is the last usable mark. <clears throat> And we're definitely going to need to be on, on the 
far side of that one for sure because it's going to want to pull pretty hard off of that mark right now I can tell already so I'm going to start it probably a full half inch to the left of the 27 <coughs> So that hopefully once I put the tension on it, it slides to exactly the right way. So let's try that. Let's start at 27 and a half. Start putting some tension there. Get our reference marks perfect. Good. It was actually going to work, it seems like, and then it wanted to slide a little bit too far. I let it too, I let it too much tension on it. Let's try that again. There we go. I'm going to stick it almost on twenty eight. Let it slide over, see if we can capture that on twenty seven by chance. finger tight maneuver. So there I am. I'm on all my reference lines. Pretty dang good. Die is straight. We're lined up almost perfectly on 27. I'd like to put a little bit of tension holding this in my armpit that way. One, two, three. Just for the first couple cranks to seats. <coughs> see four five six we're going to start watching this angle so our number six yeah we're way off seven eight nine and ten <coughs> if i had a guess right now we are approximately 10 degrees at the most from uh, project completion. That's log 27. And I can't remember if we have another one on this side. Yeah, we haven't we've done 20. Okay, so we're done. We, we've hit every number that we can hit <coughs> so far. So in order to finish this off, unfortunately, I should have probably, I probably should have done 11 pumps on each or 12 at the most. And I think that would have completed this bend really well. So on the next time when I do the other side, I'm going to say 11 or 12 pumps. And once I dial this in, I think it's reasonable to believe that I should be able to repeat this process without having to go through all this math. And I'll have, I'll know exactly, okay, 12 pumps should achieve it, you know, and I'll start watching towards the very end to make sure I hit my mark, so. All right, so, all that being said, we're gonna go back to number 23, right on the dead middle of our, <coughs> the dead center of our project. And we're going to start there. Uh, it seems like after finger tight, if you only do two pumps, it doesn't seem to actually give any actual, um, any bend because you get the flex and it just flexes back. So I found yesterday that four pumps takes out the extra flex and gives you a little bit of result out of that. So I'm going to start out with four when I do this and uh, we'll start watching our, our bend angle pretty closely at that point. So let's, I was curious after doing this evenly left and right, left and right like that, if it would stay in the die. Yeah, sure enough, it stayed right on the number 23 with no problem this time, or our starting point. <coughs> so we are finger tight and we're going to try for four and see what happens. 
one, two, three, four. All right, let's just circle the number 23 to let us know we did it again. Next, we went to 24 and then over to 23, so let's just stick with that. What this will do is it'll finish the bend on the, the inside radius uh, closer to the center of it. So giving it a little bit more bend on this inside angle, I think that should net a slightly tighter angle ultimately, which could be a good thing for us. You know, I would prefer that if possible. So let's bounce over to number 24. <clears throat> I always forget to close off this ram. That. All right. It's, I should note it, it's sticking in this thing really nicely on this the middle dot middle of the diameter now, so. Let me do this 23 plus 4 pumps just so I can uh, document this later myself. <coughs> there we go. One, two, three, and four. Eyeballing it. Let's see here. We're getting close. We're degrees. Hopefully, these four pumps per is kind of netting a little bit of. Fruit. We'll know shortly if it's not doing anything. My little shim is starting to slide out as well. Hoping to do after I complete this uh, pro this portion of the project, this video is just go right into the next bend and not have to do any of this pump counting. I just know I'll just know hopefully that 14 pumps and I should be on my angle. That's that's the goal here. <clears throat> All right, 20 number 22 it is. It's time. Sure looks convincing. I don't know, y'all. Damn, does that look good? I think what's gonna happen, it looks like it's 40, uh, it's 90 degrees right now, but when I release this, it should spring back a little. So I think we're gonna have to just do four more pumps on the next number and we should be done. So 22 is complete. We'll pull this on the chalks, actually look at our full measurement and <clears throat> decide if we need to do anything extra. So you can see that we're we're getting there. If we're not there, it looks like it's uh, sprung back a little bit about a bit on me. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's gonna be hard to show us on camera anyway. It is roughly I don't know a few degrees off. So <clears throat> we'll uh, hit number twenty-five and. Uh, Pull it again. Get 
this in here. Ben's coming. 25, check, 25. One, two, three, and four. <coughs> I really need to get an angle measuring uh, gauge on this thing just to make my life a hell of a lot easier. This is one on one side, y'all. Let's check her again. Tumbling the camera. Oh, so close. Myself, and if it looks good, I'll show you. say I mean it's it's skidding hairy oh man I think we might be on actually I think it's on <clears throat> let's put this on our oops let me document when I forget to document 25 was done because if we're done we're done <clears throat> and I want to know that for the next round yeah so we're done I, I'm about one degree short right now but if I put that thing and I line that right up on my project lines right now, I might have one degree off. It's just barely starting to fade away, uh, fade north of the line right there. So I could either, uh, you know, put uh, probably three pumps on the next number. Uh, let's do that. Let's see if we put three pumps on the next number, if that nails it. Because I think two just allows a spring back, but I think three gets it. All right, so the last three pumps are gonna go on line number 21, which will basically make it pretty close to symmetrical because we started 23 on the second round. We went this side, then this side, then this side. So we're gonna be one pump off of perfect, eh, perfect, <laughs> relatively speaking, symmetry when we're done here, if we get our one degree or so. If it, if it uh, bends it a little bit over, it's not a, a, a deal breaker because you can put this in the, the uh, the dead end, the uh, the shit end in a vise, and just bend it back just as easy. It's not a big deal. So, but let's see if this gets that finishes off that one inch, one degree that we needed. I am pretty as tight as I can get. So one, two, three, release. It's either gonna be perfect or it's gonna be a little bit too much, like one degree too much. So 21 plus three. <clears throat> Therefore, we will have the math worked out for our next one if this all works. Let me uh, set up the cam here on the ground. All right, so what I tried to do is I put the uh, straight edges on the actual line and then brought the pipe into it. And so it's the pipe is perfectly riding that line, does its arc, 
and then it is I mean I think it's fading away from the line at about between one one degree and a half of a degree so we're done so I probably could have put four pumps on that and been done with it I think I will next time and then just suffer uh, the consequences and, and pull it back. Big deal. But I, I got to think that the math on that's going to work out on this next one much quicker. So now what I, I just set it up on the other side here too, because uh, this is what we did when we initially set it up for our calculation is I wanted to be able to predictably calculate the scrap end here. Um, you do want a little bit of an overrun because it helps you when you're on this this end when you're trying to get that bend in. So if you can figure out a purpose for your scrap before you start these bends, such as on my project, what I wanted to do is I need a six and a half. I need two pieces that are six and a half inches tall for for straight scrap for here and here, and then I need two pieces that are just a little shy of sixteen inches. <clears throat> To put in these two rails right here so in my planning i calculated for a 16 inch overrun remember so this is the uh this is kind of actually a little exciting for me because we drew that that scrap out right there's my do not pass line for my 16 right there at this red line that's where this actually gets cut <clears throat> and it joins the other half of the rack um so doing exactly what we just did there, figuring out these angles, it worked out, I'll, I'll say just absolutely, I'm just thrilled with the way that worked out. So uh, this, this should allow me to have predictable bends from now on. <clears throat> and I guess the way that I'll try to prove that out is I need to bend. I, I don't, I want to be able to cut that off here. And I want to be able to bend this section of the pipe around, obviously, and cut it off here. Then I can work with two, two halves. I only end up with two weld locations. I, am, I have no experience, basically, at, at aluminum welding. And I'm, I'm welding with an aluminum spool gun. This is brand new to me. I have 13 welds worth of experience with a spool gun. Uh, welds that this, this long or less on a piece of eighth inch eighth inch scrap or thinner i can't remember if it's even thinner um i've got minimal carbon steel welding experience so what i want is as few weld locations as i can get away with on this first project so i'm going to call this an end this is almost 40 minutes long i uh, i apologize in advance i don't do editing on videos I, I might try to do some fast forwarding if i can get some time but i'd just rather post this up there let you guys pick through it um, hopefully this will bear some fruit for you guys. It, it really worked for me. So I think the key in this, definitely one of the keys is building, taking the time to build a shim out of your stock material. And I'll tell you what, if you can get that first bend in there, <laughs> you know, if you can muddle your way through that first bend, that would be a great time to cut that thing off and just slap it in there because it's a perfect 90 degree which should slap right into this die otherwise you go through the same pains that i did and you'll figure it out i you know try to anneal that thing maybe to make it easier bend but it should bend pretty easy so hope this has helped you guys if so please like please comment please subscribe if you feel like it if you think that this and or any other future diy first timer videos especially because i do a lot of stuff for the first time i love love learning all right so uh let's let's uh let, let, let's watch this together and uh, and learn together a little bit and i'll be studying your youtube videos as well take care